The scene starts out with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles preparing themselves and their equipment for a nightly mission in the city. We then see the turtles jump out from the sewers and up on the city rooftops. They run and jump through the city until they land on one of the rooftops which ends with a dramatic pose. Leonardo explains that they have received a mission from their dad Splinter and that they will need to use stealth and cunning to infiltrate the human world and retrieve the items that Splinter have tasked them to retrieve. Leonardo then pulls out a shopping list of food and begins to read them out loud. The other turtles then make fun of Leonardo for being so serious about the silly mission. Leonardo responds by saying that he tries to hype them up and he reminds them that they can't interact with the humans or they will be killed. They all agree and they all take a few items each to retrieve. First we see Leonardo entering a food store through the ceiling while covering the security camera with a drawing. Raphael then lowers himself through the ceiling behind the shop owner and grabs some bread from the shelf. Donatello steals some toilet paper and Michelangelo steals a box from a truck outside. Leonardo crawls on the floor and throws up objects to Donatello which in turn kicks them up through the ceiling to Donatello which packs the items. We then see a harbor security guard patrolling with his flashlight. We see Raphael jumping in the background and landing on a shipping container, which he breaks into and steals some protein powder. Leonardo and Michelangelo can then be seen jumping from a bridge and landing on a moving truck. They break in and steal a box of Doritos. We then see the brothers climbing a city building and a big screen with a news channel playing on it. The news reporter says that crime has increased in the city and that a power converter was stolen from a truck. We then see the brothers walking on one of the rooftops, talking about the human world and its inhabitants. They argue about whether they should stay out the night or go straight home as their dad told them to do. They decide to go to an outside movie in Brooklyn, and they make their way to the movie. The brother hides in the background and watches the movie. They watch the humans and a sad face appears on the four brothers, feeling that they don't belong and that they are outcasts that won't find love or other friends. They decide to go home and with sad faces they walk slowly the long way home through the sewers and past the train station. They sneak inside to not wake up their dad, but unknown to them Splinter is awake and lights the lamp. The four brothers scream and Splinter yells at them and asks them where they have been all this time. The brothers try to come up with a good excuse. Leonardo then comes forth and says that they are sorry and that the other brothers just wanted to see a movie. His brother screams at Leonardo and calls him a snitch. Splinter, now angry, asks them why they would want to see a movie with humans. The brothers say that it was not a big deal to which Splinter says that they have forgotten why humans are dangerous and disgusting beings. Splinter then explains to the teenage turtles how before he adopted them, he was just an ordinary rat at the bottom of society trying to make ends meet. We see how Splinter is digging through the trash trying to find some food. Splinter tried to make friends but no one liked him or they tried to eat him. He explains how he met a cockroach named Kevin and that he was his only friend before he was killed by a human passing by. He continues by saying that one rainy day he crawled down the sewers and that it was during this moment everything changed. Splinter saw green light from one of the tunnels and when taking a closer look, he saw the four small baby turtles stuck in the green toxic waste. One of the baby turtles walks up to Splinter which hides his food, thinking it wants to eat his hard-earned dinner. But the little turtle just smiles and presses his head on Splinter's leg. Splinter pets the little turtle and says that they were the first he met that didn't want to eat him or kill him. Splinter explains that he couldn't leave them there alone in the sewers, and he makes his way through the sewers with the four little baby turtles. But by doing so, Splinter is contaminated with the toxic waste and he begins to mutate into an enormous giant rat. The small baby turtles also mutate into big baby turtles that are seen jumping around the sewers, playing with each other. The scene continues by showing a timeline of Splinter raising the small baby turtles as his own children, and they became a family. We see them dancing and playing together while listening to music. And we see a moment where the baby turtles are starving and beg Splinter for food. And it is at this moment, Splinter introduces pizza to the turtles. The scene continues with showing Splinter doing household chores, bathing the little babies and putting them to bed. We then see Splinter and the little ones walking in the sewers, and the baby turtles see an opening in the sewers to the surface. The turtles point up and show that they want to see the surface. Splinter explains that when they were small, they were obsessed with the human world, and that he decided to give it a try. We then see Splinter and the little ones climbing up from the sewers. Splinter picks the little ones up and walks out on the busy city streets. 
They are all amazed by the big city and the city street signs. They then bump into a woman who apologizes before realizing that Splinter is a giant rat with four enormous baby turtles. The woman screams and an angry mob is formed that attacks Splinter and the baby turtles. Splinter has to make a run for it but he is hit in the head with an object and he drops the turtles. One of the turtles rolls out on the city road and is almost hit by a car before Splinter is able to save him. Splinter continues to explain that after that day he promised himself that he would never allow or risk anything to happen to his children. He needed to find a way to learn the ancient secrets of Jiu-Jitsu and turn his body into a weapon. We then see Splinter watching and learning Jiu-Jitsu by watching human television. He learned himself and then trained his children into deadly fighters able to defend themselves. The scene ends with Splinter explaining to the turtles that they do not need the human world, but just need each other and staying a family. Movie review with conclusion. In the summer of 2023, fans of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise were treated to a nostalgic and action-packed experience in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Directed by Jeff Rowe and Kyler Spears, this animated film brought back the beloved characters of the eternally youthful Ninja Turtles and infused them with a fresh look and modern sensibilities. One of the standout features of the movie was its art style, which combined meticulous computer-generated animation with lively doodles and scribbles, giving it a unique and vibrant appearance. This artistic choice was reminiscent of the kind of art you would find in a composition notebook filled with Sharpies during a free period at school, evoking a sense of adolescence that resonates with both old and new fans. The story followed the four pizza-loving turtles, Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Leonardo, who are now teenagers and yearning for a normal life among humans. Their desire for acceptance and integration into human society is threatened when a mutated creature named Superfly, portrayed by Ice Cube, seeks to dominate the human world. The Turtles team up with a student journalist named April, voiced by Ayo Edebiri, to save the day and prove their worth to the world above the sewers. The movie adeptly captured the essence of the internet age, incorporating pop culture references and humor throughout. The dialogue was filled with nods to YouTube, Netflix, anime, and other facets of modern online culture, giving the film a contemporary and relatable feel. However, the constant barrage of references could become tiring for some viewers as it tried hard to appeal to the online generation. Mutant Mayhem truly shines in its fight scenes, where the direction by Jeff Rowe brought a frenzied and action-packed chaos to the screen, perfectly replicating the high energy and fast, paced battles that the Ninja Turtles are known for. The movie also cleverly pokes fun at its own logic and embraces self-referential jokes, adding to the overall lighthearted and entertaining experience.